Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. Eric and Justin have found their way into the world of the paranormal after a number of incidents involving the spiritual world. Since then, they have produced several radio shows, short films, and video feeds. But nothing has helped develop them into the team that they have become, quite like the hair-raising experiences that they've witnessed during their time as paranormal investigators. These are the stories of the NSPS. Now Paratruth presents Ghosts Among Us. Part two. What's up, folks? Welcome to Paratruth Radio on the one and only Paratruth Radio Network. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are glad to be here. As always, it's been a fine and dandy wait, week. Wait, wait, I know. Wait. Do you hear that? Hear what? behind you I, uh, I didn't see anything <laughs> did you hear it at least yeah I heard it <laughs> the cat's looking at me like I'm an idiot <laughs> <laughs> so it's another good week for Paratruth Radio <clears throat> Paratruth Radio, the PTRN, beautiful show. So, um, how's the week been for you? The week has been cold and rainy. Yeah. Yeah. So, at least I'm getting a good feeling of what Maine is like. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's your week been? Um, okay. Not too bad. So... Yeah. <laughs> so anyway people folks ladies gentlemen for those of you who are a mix of both it i know it's a weird world these days it's a sinful world um and what's sad is i can say that and it's actually real because there really is a mix of both man and woman now <laughs> disgusting anyway well uh, <laughs> even back when we were kids it was there we just didn't know about it <laughs> well it wasn't a big deal yeah, yeah, Game not as crack. much as it is now. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, then this country lost its backbone. Anyhow, I know a few weeks back, it's been like four weeks, I think. It's yeah, it's been a while. It's been 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 just about a month, maybe a little more, a little less. I don't know. But uh, we had did an introduction episode. Uh, what was the name of it again? The Remember? Ghosts Among Us. That's it. The Ghosts Among Us. <laughs> um, you know, so we did this intro episode called The Ghosts Among Us, and we had told y'all that we were going to eventually do a series on The Ghosts Among Us, which is, as you heard during the intro, uh, stories about the investigations that Justin and I did along with our team back in 2010, uh, 2011, in which we did paranormal investigations under the name NSPS, Night Stalkers Paranormal Society. Yep. And so, after four weeks of uh, hanging out with different guests on the radio show, you know, having authors on and whatnot, which was a great time, we are very excited to finally just be back to just the two of us and getting to talk about ghosts, because we know how much everyone has been waiting to hear about ghosts. <laughs> and... This episode, all the episodes actually, or for the most part, for the next uh, at least couple weeks uh, for this series is really going to be fun and interesting because it's not just going to be us telling you ghost stories. We actually have evidence that we're going to share with you as well 
which is a huge, you know, thing, especially in the paranormal community, because words can only do so much, you know, coming from one person's mouth. But when you have evidence to back it up, that's when you start questioning, you know, what does live or exist beyond our own reality um, <clears throat> or universe. Well, um, it, it will be interesting to go back in time as well to kind of get a feel for how we did investigations back then mm-hmm. uh, compared to what we do for investigations now, which is only similar in the sense that we still do recordings, but we're not necessarily talking to spirits to right. do the recordings now. It's more so just trying to get a recording of something, even though we're not talking to it. So right. it'll be interesting to see, compare and contrast those things as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know some of the stuff we're going to say tonight, that we are going to say tonight is going to sound similar. You know, we've talked or t- at least touched base on some of this stuff already, some of our own viewpoints about paranormal investigations and stuff like that. But uh, you're going to hear it again, just so you know. I apologize ahead of time uh, if any of it is re- repeated from previous shows. But uh, there's going to be a lot of fresh things uh, appearing on the show tonight and upcoming episodes as well for this particular topic. And we really just hope you you all find it interesting. And, of course, just give the note now. If any of you have any questions or want to share your own experiences or comment on any of the uh, evidence that we share, feel free to do that. Uh, You can email us, of course, at paratruthradio.com. No. Well, you could do that because we have a contact there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you could also email us, actually email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com. Or, of course, hit us up on Facebook, uh, depending on whether or not you want your story or comments to be read, uh, you know. On air, yeah. On air, like, well, I mean, on air, if you want it to be publicly displayed, hence Facebook, or you'd rather send oh, it as a private message okay. uh, where you can send it via email. And then, of course, if you want us to share or, or if you're okay with us sharing – any experiences that you're sharing with us, let us know that in the email as well or however you send it to us so that we can go ahead and prepare that for the following episode so we can share your uh, experience and even talk about it a little bit on air uh, between Justin and I. And, you know, let's go from there. But right. plenty of good stuff. This is fun. This is like uh, this is like Parachutes Radio Easter right here <laughs> in a sense. Uh, or Christmas. Because we never know what we're going to get into. <laughs> that, let's say let's say Christmas. Because like, wait a second, this is nothing like Easter, <laughs> but Christmas. There's well, a lot of Easter would gifts. be good because we're trying to find things. <laughs> wait, yeah, yeah, we'll go with Christmas. There's there's a lot of little gifts uh, on these next couple of episodes that I think everyone's going to find quite intriguing and fun. Uh, but yeah, of course, typical rabbit trails. We'll be doing that. Of course, you can't have an investigation without rabbit trails because even during investigations, we get rabbit trail. Um, yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But uh, the one thing for, for this particular episode, uh, no more discussing future episodes right now. This is about this episode right now. I don't know. I don't know what everyone's looking forward to. I know I was looking forward to having a lot of stuff to show, but depending on where we went for an investigation, uh, you don't always get a lot of a, a lot of interaction. And in fact, the majority of investigations that people do, you don't, they don't receive a lot of interaction with the spirit world. Uh, it's usually a hit or miss. You know, maybe you get a right. thing here or there. Uh, and most of the time it's real scrubbed and you can't understand what's going on. You, know, you can't understand an EVP or uh, you don't catch a certain noise that you hear in the distance or, you know, something like that. Right. Or you don't get a picture or something. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any pictures today. For, well, for these for this episode, we do, do have you? two. We just have two pictures of. I, I got a picture of the of Rockefeller Center when it was originally built. I got a picture of that, which uh, you'll see pop up here, guys, if you are on YouTube. Uh, and then, as well as uh, the ghost, I got a picture of Ghost Alley, just the inside of the alley. Oh, okay. But as far as actual pictures from the investigations, no. Yeah. I wish I did, uh, especially the one that we'll talk about today. <laughs> to to give a little context as to what happened, but yeah, and it's it really sucks because we would have had those pictures if I were back in Cleveland and the computer was working, which I don't even know if it is. But uh, unfortunately, we had a much older computer. Uh, I think maybe late '90s, early 2000. Yeah. Uh, so the computer is pretty much a goner right now, uh, and that's where we used to store all of our stuff, uh, all of our 
photos anyway, all of our images. And unfortunately, since, you know, I'm nearly 400 miles away from there, I can't really get there easily. So, but without, beside that, you know, we have, we, we have EVPs. Well, you know, this is related in, in a sense. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, well, EVPs from one side because I don't know why I did it, but I got rid of my stuff. Uh, Shame. Probably because I felt that I wasn't going to do it anymore, but we also didn't think we'd be doing a radio show ever again either. So, <laughs> all of, all and of yet, my. I, and yet, I kept my microphone, I kept my headphones, both of which things he got rid of, uh, kept all my EVPs. <laughs> And if I had my computer back home, I'd have all my images. Hmm. Which, if I'm not mistaken, all right, this is just bust on Justin Knight. Because if I'm not mistaken, he also got rid at one point. Uh, and he's not doing this now. This is because he didn't think he'd be on radio anymore. He got rid of all of his books that we had gotten, we had gotten from past. Uh, interviews that we had had years ago on some of our original shows Actually, that we no, had together. I, I didn't. I thought you did. I thought you said you sold a bunch of them. No, I've got all of this stuff over here is mm-hmm. old, is old and new. Mm-hmm. I was going to. I was going to get rid of a mm-hmm. bunch of old ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially yeah. that not that we can use now because uh, viewpoints have changed and what have you. Um, yeah. But. Um, Always up for a healthy debate. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, we, as we said from Night Stalkers, we could start a library on, uh, of paranormal books that we get. So, oh yeah. But enough about books and what we have and don't have, other than you know, minds. We don't have brains very much, but you know, <laughs> occasionally we're, we say smart things. <laughs> Not very on occasion. often. No, but it's it's on occasion. Um. Let's get into the show. <laughs> Justin, what do you, what do you want to begin? Do you, I know you, Justin and I talked about this at the beginning of the show, and you, sometimes we come into a show very unorganized, and we do that on purpose because we like to allow uh, everything to happen in the time that it's happening, you know, <clears throat> kind of let the universe lead our way in a sense. Um, and I think like going into a show, unless it's you know with an author or, you know, or a guest of some sort that we're com- that's a third party guest, right. um, in, in which case it's usually pretty structured, uh, just so we don't have too much dead air and we're, you know we want to keep professional stuff like that. But in the episodes that Justin and I do alone, we usually come up with a topic and then we just go right into it uh, and just literally wing it. We just have fun because. We like having fun. It's boring when it's all structured all the time for us because we know what to expect. And so that's why I think we stay away from the structure because we don't know what to expect. Um, but so Justin and I were discussing earlier about how we're going to begin and what we're going to view or talk about first. So, Justin, on that note, just real quick, do you do you want to start off with the uh, Ghost Alley or would you rather start off with the uh, – Let's say this, I'll just say the second EVP that, that was caught at a Rockefeller point. Um, what we can do is uh, we'll, we'll start with Ghost Alley because the, the second one is more uh, effective, if you will, compared to the Ghost Alley one. Uh, gotcha. I'm, I'm looking – I looked up some information uh, prior to the show. I'm not really finding – anything as far as when Ghost Alley opened or what it was before it was a bowling alley. But it's a bowling alley in um, uh, what's the city? Uh, Wadsworth, Ohio. And we had actually done an investigation for a residential home prior to going to Ghost Alley. We actually mm-hmm. cut the residential home short because it had to do with a child involved um and you know he had to get to bed we weren't really getting a whole lot anyways so we we cut it short and then we went over to ghost alley right all right that's true um and that that in and of itself was interesting you know it was interesting doing a residential home that's something that we don't normally do is residential homes back then i should say uh just investigating a residential home never really came up we were always ones who like hitting the landmarks, if you will, right. the things that the public knows of and uh, has, has the things that have been stirred up on the internet 
you know, basically where all the rumors are floating around and so on and so forth because we like to go and try to debunk them or prove them and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, we did have that one home come up to us. We actually did that. The reason we did that home was because it, we were working with an affiliate of ours. Um, well, I should say we were affiliated theirs in a way. Uh, it was just a, a company that we met. Uh, we met a guy uh, who happened to have the same name as mine. And uh, we talked with him about just getting an investigations, working together for a little while. And so we, this home came up and he sent us there. And yeah, as Justin said, kind of a bust. Nothing really happened. I think a lot. The end result, I think, was mostly just a kid's imagination. Yeah. You know, he associated it with a character from a TV show, I believe. Right. Not saying that demons can't portray characters in TV shows, but there was no evidence whatsoever besides the fear that the parents had, or worry, I should say, yeah. and then the kids' own fears. Uh, there were no EVPs. There was nothing caught on camera, uh, nothing, whether uh, video or still photography, there's nothing caught. Um, no weird feelings in the house. Everything seemed per- perfectly natural. Uh, so, yeah, we were there for four hours, I think, maybe five. And then from there, yeah, I, something not, like that. I can't remember for sure how long, but it was yeah. it started actually kind of early. It was still light out mm-hmm. and then left probably around 10 or 11. So it was, yeah. it was rather early. It was rather early. But then we went over to Ghost Alley. Which, as Justin said, is in Wadsworth. And, well, let's say that was an interesting experience. Yeah. We, we were, we, we, uh, not to say we were in over our heads, but it, it was, it was unexpected, to say the least. And I think right off the bat, Justin, let, let's just talk about when we first got there. I mean, when we went into the basement, now, this is what happened, folks. When we first got there, uh, it, the, the team leader uh, for their this other team that we we're helping, um, he asked us how the house went. We talked about it a little bit, but then he asked us to come downstairs with him to the basement. Mm-hmm. Now, this other company, I'm not going to say the name of the company, so don't ask anybody. Um, it's just, well, one, it's not fair to them to be, you know, and also we don't want to disclose anything. Uh, that we don't have the rights to disclose. But <clears throat> this other team happened to be recording a a, a, a rural television show. Right. You know, it, it, it wasn't. It's not like a worldwide show or anything. Actually, if you go online, you can find those episodes, which Justin and I found a couple weeks ago. Um, and I'm sure you and, can probably find them on YouTube or whatever as well. Yeah, that, that's exactly where they're at. The, the, well, that's what I meant. You can find the actual episodes on YouTube. They're, you know, so, so have, however many hours long, um, some of them. And you've got uh, a one-hour show of us just talking uh, this long. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we get there, and after, you know, just discussing some things, this guy, his real name is, his name, his real name is Eric. So, you know, sometimes we t- give fake names to different people. Uh, but his name was Eric, or is Eric. And he asked us to come downstairs to the basement. Now, at the time, Justin was a practicing medium. And so the interest here that Eric wanted to find out was whether or not Justin would have the same uh, feelings and answers and give the same answers that a medium that had been in there previously gave to them. Uh, and this is something that was very interesting, even for me, because at the time, yeah, at the time, I wasn't too thrilled with with Justin's ability anymore because things have changed spiritually at this point for me but it was still very interesting because this guy Eric gave us no information on the place whatsoever uh, he didn't tell us you know what was going on he didn't tell us what was affecting people or what type of feelings people were having uh, he didn't tell us what people were seeing or what had actually happened physically in the place at any time over the years that it was built um, and yet he called us downstairs and said, Justin, take a walk around. Tell us what you think and what you feel. Now, Justin, do you remember any of that stuff and what you do? Do you remember anything that you felt or said at that time? I know it was a while ago. I don't remember the areas that I felt it, but there were distinct areas in the basement where you could tell something was there. I don't mm-hmm. remember what I said. It, it's been a really long time. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember the feelings. Um and just to clarify too, folks, I still get those feelings. I, I've never t- 
talked to ghosts or, or spirits, uh, I just can feel when something's around. Uh, so I do remember getting the feelings of something being there. I just don't remember the exact location or what I had said. And so what type you of have the recordings, I'm sure you probably heard it, but well, no, I actually don't know what you said because we didn't, we weren't recording at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, this was just like a pre-investigation uh, debriefing, if you will, where he, where we were allowed to just go down where the basement. Now they were videotaping, they're recording their show upstairs at the time, so we had free range in the basement. Um, and at the time, we were just sent down there to walk around, get a feel of the place, see where everything was, hear a little bit of information on the history of the place and what people were seeing and where they were seeing it. But I do remember when we first got downstairs, we were there for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes before you, Justin, stopped in the middle of the room. And Eric had asked, what's wrong? And he said, I feel something right here. And he's like, well, what do you feel? And I, I believe you said, you don't know, but it feels almost dreadful, almost kind of sad at the same time. It, you know, it was an odd feeling. Uh, and a guy was really impressed by that because it just so happens that the medium that they had in earlier in the night when we weren't there said the exact same thing at this exact same place. Um, and then that happened a couple of times as we roamed around the basement, uh, which really seemed to, to impress everybody there from their team because they had all been there with the, with the medium that was there earlier in the day. And Justin's, uh, I guess, I don't, I don't know what to call it, but like, I guess feelings, I, I can't think of a better word. Um, good enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, vibes, I don't know. Uh, but the, the vibes that he felt, uh, we'll change it up a bit. were dead on accurate to what, this other medium said. And that in itself was pretty intriguing and interesting, even to myself, because I thought that was impressive. Now, I wasn't there for the other medium. I don't know what they said. Could they have been lying the whole time and just pretending that he you know, was spot on? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The fact is that he had said things that got them really smiling and just blowing their minds. And that started to, you know, for me as a new Christian, started to have me question things like, wait a second, is this medium thing real? You know, how does it work? So on and so forth. But what was interesting is as we were going through there, we stopped at a little corridor in the back, very, very back of the uh, basement. There's actually a red light back there. It's the only light on in the entire basement. I do it's pitch black. That, yeah. Yeah. It, I, like I'm visualizing it like it was yesterday right now. And it was, is one of the eeriest things I've seen, you know, back then uh, during our days of investigations. Um, and so there's this corridor back there. It was like a, almost like a wine cellar in a sense, kind of. Um, but it was all made of brick, had a dirt floor. Um, That's where they had the kitchen, right? Or it was the old kitchen? Yeah. Or well, no, like no. That, that, uh, that might have been the old kitchen because the newer kitchen was on the opposite okay. side. Um where you would have walked down the stairs to come into enter the into the basement. Um, so this other area is way in the back and was no longer used anymore. And I think they had like a furnace back there as well and a couple other things. It was, it was almost like a stock room. They had a lot of uh, uh, boxes and you know tables and stuff like that stacked and stacked to the ceiling. But as we were back there, um, we, were, we were just asking questions. Uh, one of the guys had an EVP uh, decided to do EVP session. And so they were, you know, we we're all talking, asking questions, so on and so forth. And then we decided to walk. And I walked ahead of everybody else. And on our way back to the main entrance of the basement towards the stairs, uh, I remember the red light coming from behind me flooding um, the darkness ahead. Uh, and off the left side of my, I think it was the left side of my eye, I saw a shadow dart across the boxes on the opposite side of the room. And it was a massive shadow, which would suggest one of two things. Either it was a giant, you know, a shadow of a giant, or whatever created the shadow was standing near me uh, when it crossed the light. Right. Because the distance would have, you know, based on the distance, that would have expanded the shadow on the wall. Um, and that was the first thing that I saw that night. And from there, I was hooked. You know, I knew that I had to get down there and do investi- uh, some, well, investigations, but ask some questions, do some EVP sessions, so on and so forth. 
And I know you and I, Justin, we went down there a couple of times just by ourselves right. um, and asked some questions. We walked around. We didn't get much at all. Um, and then we watched the monitors to see a couple other people going downstairs. And one particular person, one person in particular, her name was Jen. She was the daughter of Eric or is the daughter of Eric. Um, well, I and, hope she's still alive. Well, yeah, yeah, she is. She is. But uh, she was someone that Justin and I had actually uh, got pretty acquainted with. And we, we were all the same age. So we were hanging out and talking. And she was down in the basement by herself. And she was in this little other, like, it's just a little side room. Uh, there was a door in there and there were a bunch of uh, cabinets. Um, and, but it was all brick walls again and a uh, concrete floor. And she was sitting on a cooler that was down there. And I, I don't think it was her cooler. It was somebody else's cooler. Don't I probably belong to the company, uh, to the, to the alley, but she was sitting down there and she heard this loud whine just come out of nowhere. Um, and it almost sounded like, Oh, almost sounded like laughter or like, Oh, like a scream. It sounded like a scream. Like a distant scream is what it sounded like. And I remember the people on the headphones who were listening and watching the monitors, they're like, oh, my gosh, what is that? Mm -hmm. And she heard it, too. And so we quickly had to jump in to figure out, you know, try to debunk what it was. Do you remember what that was? It had had to do with machinery, I think, right? I don't remember then. No. So the the main entrance uh, that we used to walk into the place Uh, led from the parking lot straight into headquarters. And right beneath headquarters was where Jen was doing her investigation, her own EVP session. And the scream happened, and everybody's freaking out, trying to figure out what the heck it was. Well, as the investigation is going on, right next to us, people are walking in and out of this door. This door happened to have a spring on it, which allowed it to fall back. But every time it would open, the spring would stretch and create this... Noise, And so down in the basement, it was so elongated and far enough that it distorted the sound enough to make it sound as if a woman is screaming somewhere in the basement. And I remember seeing the fear on Jen's face when she heard that. And then she'd seen everybody in the uh, at the headquarters like, oh, my God, what's going on? Until it was finally debunked. And people were like, oh, it was just the door. And, you know, people were a little bummed, but at the same time, they're really glad and <laughs> weird stuff. But what was really also funny about this, and you might remember this, uh, towards the end of her investigation down there, her AVP session, she stood up from the cooler and began to walk slowly because she thought she saw something. She began to walk real slowly towards the door, and you just heard a loud pop. And like she freaked out. You saw her jump yeah, a mile. I do remember that. And <laughs> she didn't know what happened. She thought something like just a ghost did something. And it turned out that she was because she was sitting on the cooler the cooler got indented and that short moment that she had walked away from it it repopped itself back to its original form and created the loudest burst that, that uh you know you could possibly hear in a tiny room of darkness just something that'll scare the crud out of you <laughs> but uh fun stories man those are good times yeah yeah i i really don't remember i, I remember bits and pieces but i don't remember uh, I remember the feelings when we first went down there. I, I don't remember what I said, um, so I'm I'm glad that you're here because I don't remember that part. Mm-hmm. I do remember go- walking around down there, getting the different feelings. I don't remember any EVPs on my end. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think I got any or any. Mm-hmm. T- I I don't think I had any experiences at all, other than just the feelings I was getting. As far as uh, capturing anything on on camera or or recording uh, right. so it, it's actually kind of interesting uh going back in memory and, and remembering a couple of those instances um before we get any further and before we get to the evp i think we'll take our first break uh folks you're listening to paratruth radio right here on the paratruth radio network we will be right back after eric's random fact of the day now, Eric's random fact of the day. 
Did you know that uncontrolled anger and anger outbursts are linked to stroke and heart attack? According to lifehack.org, when you just can't shake the anger and it feeds off itself for too long, you will either find that you're making yourself physically sick or your outbursts can land you in jail. An article published by CNN shows a link between angry outbursts and increased risk for heart attack and stroke. Smoking, poor diet, and lack of exercise can exacerbate the effects of anger, putting you at an increased risk for cardiovascular events. This was Eric's folks welcome back to paratruth radio my name is justin and i'm eric and we've been discussing our investigation over at ghost alley and uh, we were kind of like these guys night stalker oh wait that that's okay <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, we we do have an evp or a Kind of like an EVP for to play for you guys. Uh, Eric was just kind of describing the feeling that, that we were getting, uh, as he said. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm a sensitive or a medium, whatever you want to call it, and mm-hmm. I was getting those feelings down there. And uh, so, was there anything you wanted to share about the the recording before we get play it? Uh, well, yeah, oh, I'm not exactly sure how much of the recording you're playing uh, before just it happens. Little, just a little bit. Just a small section. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me put it into context a little As bit a and set fact, up. I'll, I'll give you an actual. Uh, it's 45 seconds long, so a little bit okay. before and then a little bit after. That's yeah. great. 45 seconds is plenty. But uh, let me set it up a little for everyone. Just create paint like a picture for you guys. So me and Jen, we're sitting down in the basement by ourselves. It's pitch black other than the red light that's down at the other end. This place is maybe 50 yards long or so total, maybe a little bit longer. It was huge. Um, so, you know, we're just these, you know, two people completely by ourselves in nearly pitch black. Uh, and we decided that we're going to sit down and just do an EVP session. And we start asking questions and, you know, talking. And then her and I just have a you know, casual conversation. Um, and we begin to talk about provoking and I ask her if she's ever provoked before. And it's something that she doesn't really like doing just cause she's not very good at it. You know, she, she basically at the time didn't, didn't feel like she was, uh, uh I guess not strong enough, but uh, scary enough to provoke if that works. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to how else to put that. Here's an example. But um, this is from Supernatural, where Cass cusses for the first time, and he says, "You ass butt." <laughs> exactly. It's like one of those. You know. So I don't think she felt very intimidating. That's the word I'm looking for. She didn't feel intimidating, uh, so she doesn't like provoking. But you know, after talking with me, I was able to push her into doing it, and so we started to provoke a little bit and there came a time where we just kind of gave up we sat back down we're again we're sitting at this table two chairs on a table just sitting there have the evp recorder uh sitting right next to me on the table her and i are just talking and then it just goes silent for a moment we just kind of take a breath take a small breather uh we have a good moment of silence and then basically this happens and we'll go ahead and play that for you now all right Can you mimic this? All right, so folks, that there was uh, an elongated version of this clip that we had caught uh, during the CVP session. And what happened 
is and obviously there's there's quite a bit of background noise going on you could we can hear people walking upstairs a furnace kicks on at one point i believe um which you get this nice little hum going but right when jen begins to say something and she says uh she basically i think she says i need to get up or something as she's saying that you hear a bang over her voice uh, from behind, it came from behind us. It's in the background. We're going to go ahead and play that again for you one more time. Only we've shortened it a little bit and we've bumped up the volume so you can hear it again. Listen to when Jen begins to talk. Yeah. All right. So you heard that bang in the background there, right? Mm. Um, and it almost sounds like there are two little bangs. There's a big bang and then there's a tiny bang after that. Um, now, what's interesting is over the CVP that you just listened to, it doesn't sound that loud. But when you're actually in the room, it was a tremendous sound. It was super loud. Uh, and it got both of us to jump. Now, what's interesting is that that noise came from probably 40 feet behind us in another room, which happened to be the kitchen. And so at that point, when she asked if I had heard it and I responded, yeah, we literally both just looked at each other and then jumped up and went opposite directions <laughs> into the two rooms that we knew connected in the back somewhere. And so I went through the kitchen. She went the opposite direction, I think, through the laundry room. Uh, and we met up in the back, finding absolutely nobody back there. Um, but what's interesting is in the kitchen, everything was steel, uh, stainless steel appliances and in particular the fridge was that solid stainless steel. And I, you know, we tapped on some things to see what would make that sound. And it sounded like the fridge itself would have made that sound. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you were to make contact with the fridge, obviously it didn't make that sound from the inside, uh, but it was as if someone was hitting the steel. So if you're a linebacker and you try and tackle the fridge. Exactly. Something like that, you know. <laughs> um, but what's very interesting about this particular session is if you notice in the long version that we played, the 45 second version, at the beginning I said, can you mimic this? You know, and did three knocks. And then, you know, it took a while, 20 seconds or so, before you heard that loud bang. And then you heard another time. Was the knock, the small knock before that, was that one of you guys, or was that her getting up? Or The the tiny knock right before the big one was her getting up, I believe. Okay. Um, I don't remember hearing any knock whatsoever from behind us until that ma- that big bang. Okay. And then there's that tiny bang that sounded exactly the same, just at a smaller, uh, I, guess, I don't know, frequency or size or whatever. You know, it wasn't as loud. Um, but it's still interesting because, you know, in the spirit world or when it comes to our reality and the reality of, I guess, what would be considered the spirit world, interactions aren't always point on you know like mm-hmm. if i say knock three times almost 99 you know 99 percent of the time you're not going to get a knock back at all or even within the first 20 or 30 seconds right. it's an elongated respite you know there's a longer space between the responses as you can um, see from that recording actually yeah you know it, it really does show now, does that mean that whatever this bang was coming from the fridge or from the kitchen, was that in response to me knocking? I don't know. You know, that's something I can't say for certain. We tried it again. We tried knocking again and nothing happened. And we tried knocking throughout the night several times and nothing happened. This is the only instance in which something had happened. Um, but it would appear that there was some kind of an intelligent haunting there based on even based on this evidence alone, but also based on visuals that we had seen with our own naked eyes. Right. Uh, I think pretty much everyone had seen at some point or feelings that we some of us had and so on and so forth. Didn't um, you guys see a shadow down there as well? Uh, well, I saw the shadow that well, I, I mean, mentioned earlier. One that actually but I think, traveled or something. I don't, I, I, I mean, it sounds familiar. I know it wasn't me. It might have been Jen. Maybe I'm just thinking of when you guys ran to see this or hear, uh, see what the sound was. And Mm -hmm. I I thought maybe you guys had said that you were chasing a shadow or something like that. Oh, I'm probably. That could be. It could be. Um, 
it's a lot of confusion in the investigation <laughs> process sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, so this is the only evidence that we got. But this knock was pretty essential in uh, telling us, you know, helping us decide whether or not this was a, you know, a, uh, I just used the word, intelligent haunting, intelligent haunting. Uh, it definitely scared the wits out of me, and I don't scare easily. Um, it caught me way off guard. And there's nothing. There's no source, you know, no real source for the for the knock. There were no nobody was down there. There are no shadows. Uh, I, we called uh, to headquarters to see if anyone else had heard it from upstairs, but no one heard it, which is a surprise. Um, I don't even think the people watching the monitors. I don't even remember if they heard it. I can't remember. Um, like I, I, va- I vaguely. Vaguely, based on my memory, I want to say that somebody heard something, but it wasn't significant. We're like, oh, hey, what was that? Right. Um, but I know it was a big deal for us. You know, it was something that was pretty incredible. So not exactly an EVP, but it was audio that we happened to record in real time as we were doing an EVP session that had we, we couldn't debunk it. Basically, you know, it's just we don't know. We don't know what it was. Right. Does that mean it's paranormal? No. Does it mean that it's paranormal? Maybe. But all you can really classify it as is weird because you yeah. can't really prove one way or the other. Yeah, you can't prove one way or the other. Now, but, a uh, lot of investigation teams will will tell you if it's weird and you can't explain it, then it's the paranormal. Mm, no, not <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, it could be something that mm-hmm. was responding to Eric, but in the long run, do we know that for sure? Absolutely not. We don't know that for sure. Yeah. But that was pretty much the gist of it, you know, for uh, Ghost Alley. It's supposedly one of the most haunted places in in Northeast Ohio, supposedly. Uh, Since then, I don't think I've – I haven't come across anything that uh, people have witnessed since then. I I think it's been pretty much dormant uh, since that night. Um, But it it was still an interesting – it's an interesting story and it was an interesting experience. We saw things. We heard things. We felt things. Uh, and of course, here we are, so many years later. And I mean, I remember a lot of it, like it was, you know, like it was just a couple of days ago, which is really, which means it had an impact on me in some way, right? Because um, I don't always just remember, you know, everything. Um, but I think that that particular investigation was one that really helped step up later investigations for us and what we were looking for. Um, by far, this is one in which we had the one like some of the least evidence, but it also opened doors, um, I think, to our own experiences and understanding uh, the spiritual realm a little more and how just not everything, you know, not everything goes as as we ourselves plan. You know, everything is just based on random It's based on just randomness, really. Um, but. There is one place that we investigated together and as a team, as NSPS, and we again had help from another team, not the same team, but a different team. Uh, In fact, just a couple people from that team, that was the leaders. But it was our our investigation at Rockefeller Point Mm -hmm. in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, And I, actually, I think it's Cleveland. It was in Cleveland Heights, I believe. Cleveland Heights, yeah. And the, at, we keep calling it Rockefeller uh, Center, um, but yeah. according to the this uh, information that I've got, it's actually called Heights Rockefeller Building. Mm. And uh, just to give a little bit of quick history on it, uh, it was opened in 1931. It was actually opened by John D. Rockefeller Jr. and. Uh, John D. Rockefeller was actually from Cleveland, Ohio, which I did not know that. I didn't know Rockefeller was from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, but uh, when Junior came around, he actually bought a lot of uh, estates from his dad, and this was one of them uh, that he decided to build. Now, you, you know, you hear the rumors that you know the Rockefellers are a part of secret societies or they're part of the 13 families uh, that we kind of talked about with uh, Gary Wayne last week and uh, I've actually heard people talk about them being linked to the mob which we'll we'll get into that a little bit here about Heights Rockefeller building 
But uh, actually, a lot of history with, with the building. And the one picture, which you guys will see right now, uh, it, it's Rockefeller Sr. and Jr. And it almost looks like a good fella photo because <laughs> Sr. is like looking straight at the camera with a very stoic look on his face, cane in his hand. And the other uh, Jr. is just like looking back or looking to the side and kind of like a smirk on his face. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. So if you guys are watching the YouTube, which I encourage you guys to watch the YouTube channel, uh, you'll see the picture right here that shows Rockefeller Sr. and Jr. uh, walking in, I believe, it looks like it's in Cleveland, but not where the building is. Yeah, I think, the yeah, um, I want to say the building was moved at one one point like it was much older elsewhere and then it became it Rockefeller no it doesn't say that it was moved okay alrighty then scratch what I said <laughs> um, so <clears throat> Rockefeller Rockefeller Point was, and I'm going to just call, going to call it Rockefeller Point because that's actually what it says on the building uh, when we investigated there. Maybe it was uh, renamed. It was maybe it was originally Rockefeller Point, and then they renamed mm-hmm. it Heights Rockefeller Building. Could very well could be because uh, I remember when we were there, we even took pictures uh, where it says Rockefeller Point, and Point spelled with an E, not just you know, not yeah. Point. I, I don't even know the difference. Just just not, with an not E. Not this Point. <laughs> not that Point. A different point, but I don't know what the other point is. It's just not this one. When they add a um, e, it usually is referring to buildings or streets, uh, not necessarily pointing the finger. Yeah, uh, I actually I remember watching a history uh, a channel on uh, episode on History Channel, and I think it was about the men who built America, and Rockefeller was one of the ones that they brought up. And of they did. yeah, he's one. Of the yeah, most- and I yeah, and like and I I knew he was from Cleveland because of that. And he got into the oil business and the train business and so on and so forth, which is what made his millions and really helped establish uh, Rockefeller as a businessman. Um, but we have a couple streets back up in Cleveland, too, named after him as well. And in fact, there's one right next to the Black Oxide building, um, or at least there used to be, I should say, because it was a Rockefeller bridge over there um, that I might have been taken down. I think they were rebuilding things and, you know, construction. Yeah construction it wrecks things but <clears throat> anyway so we and didn't just come across supposedly it stirs up uh paranormal activity as well yeah absolutely um so we didn't just fall upon rockefeller point we actually had someone reach out to us uh and i don't remember the young man's name but he was probably a little bit younger than us happened to be doing really well for himself <laughs> uh doing music uh owning his own music studio and recording and whatnot. Uh, so he reached out to us. He had just moved into the building, uh, into a small room, into the basement. He didn't actually own the building. He just owned, you know, had a small section down there right. for his stuff. Uh, really nice setup that he had for recording music. I was say recording uh, studio, if I remember yeah, correctly. Sound, soundproof, you know, boxes that you can go in and sing, and it was great. Uh, and, and he actually conducted interviews with a few of us because he wanted to create this one, his own little uh, – Here's a little short film, if you will, about the investigation that we were doing. Mm -hmm. And so he invited us and asked us to come along and just scope this place out because he had heard about stories there. He had seen things, heard things, him, his mom, uh, I think his stepdad is who he was as well, had heard things. His stepdad actually uh, owned another part uh, of the basement for his – he had owned a gym, uh, you know, like a weight gym working out i don't know a gym uh where there's weights and people move things to get stronger not basketball (laughs) gym Uh, (laughs) um and and so we were down there when we got there we met up with all of them and he kind of showed us around a little bit and he you know he he showed us different rooms and what they thought i'm gonna let you go ahead and take over with some of the things that they showed us and some of their their ideas or rumors that they had had heard and then related to us before the investigation. Okay. Well, the biggest rumor, like I was saying, uh, supposedly Rockefeller was connected to the mob was they did say that this building was owned and used by the mob. And Mm -hmm. that's the biggest chunk of evidence. Uh, 
or uh, history that they had shared with us that they had found out. Now, there was certain areas, like in the gym, there was this little office off to the side. Now, this little office wasn't just an office. It had this huge steel, almost uh, 1930s, 40s-ish style freezer door still on it. Mm-hmm. And inside, there you could you could tell this thing was a freezer, it, and it almost looked like a torture room <laughs> that the mob might have used if they really did own the place. Uh, which we'll, we'll talk about something that we caught there. Uh, there's an EVP and also a picture. Uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like we said, we don't have the picture, but we'll describe and kind of give the details as to what we concluded when we talked to the, the people and then afterwards as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a room in the very back that was kind of like an old storage room of just random junk that was in this building. And then there was like a like a workshop next to that room, like, like a, what would you call it, um, woodwork shop or mm-hmm. whatever, kind of like people making cabinets. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think it was just down in that area that we were doing the, or yeah. well that that lower level, not necessarily just that area, but it was just the lower level of this place that we were doing the investigation <laughs> on. Uh, it might have been one one step up too, because I think we went into the recording studio to try and get some evidence as well, because that's mm-hmm. where he was. That's where he, the young kid was hearing stuff, right? Right. right. So um, we did go upstairs just to the recording studio i don't think we had permission to go beyond that point because there was other businesses that owned office space there but very interesting areas uh there was another little area i don't know if anybody owned it it was just part of the building and i can't it was like paint and stuff in there or something like that Mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah and very eerie feelings, but I don't remember any stories about it. So if I forgot anything, fill, fill in the gaps. Yeah, and I don't think you forgot anything. Okay. <laughs> in regards to every, at least in regards to what he had told us, you know, yeah. and what they related to us uh, before the investigation. You know, it's important, folks, that when you go into an investigation, you know as much about its history as possible, as well as as much uh, of what the witnesses witnessed um, whoever is bringing you on board <clears throat> uh, because the more you know the better that way you can help uh, I, I guess help drive your, your your investigation in one direction or another um, if you go in there with just point blank with no information whatsoever you have no clue what you're looking for and you're kind of lost and you end up with nothing but when you're able to fine tune your, your, your results and, and to say in this case it's a mob you know if, if it is a mob and there's seems to be some kind of historical connection in some way not necessarily that Rockefeller was part of the mob but perhaps there are people that he knew or someone uh, who had at one point stayed in the building was you know maybe part of the mafia or whatever or maybe they just uh, went to the mob but they weren't really a part of the mob yeah you know something like that obviously like if that goes down the line uh, through this you know from from the historical story to what people are saying who bought this place uh, to what they're witnessing ghost wise or voice wise and so on and so forth. Then, you know, to direct your, your attention more towards this mob area because you might get more interaction from the spirit. If it is indeed the spirit of a, of a mobster, you know, from way back when in the twenties and tens and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's very important to do your research, uh, get as much information as possible. There's no such thing as too much information. When it comes to investigating, uh, just prepared and ready to go. Now, <clears throat> as Justin said, you know he laid out all the foundation work for us. You know they showed us around, uh, they got us ready to go, and then from there it was time to task up and start doing what we do best. And that's asking questions mm-hmm. to non-bodied Physical. people. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so. <laughs> we had I like non-bodied people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cook. Uh, Good times. <laughs> well, um, so 
a couple of things. Well, one thing I want to mention before we get into the actual investigation is perhaps one thing that we did that we shouldn't have done. That's the first thing. And that's the amount of people that we had on this investigation. Yeah. Now, we didn't plan on having as many people as there were. But unfortunately, it just kind of turned out that a lot of people showed up for this investigation. Uh, two of which were my friends, two girls uh, that wanted to join us for an investigation, and we gave them permission so way way ahead. Eric invited them along. I didn't know. They asked me if they can go, and they were waiting for the right one to go on. I figured this one would be good because it's an open floor. we got plenty of stuff to do. It's not someone's house, so on and yeah. so forth. Um, so we had these two girls come along, and then we had our team, which consisted of three people plus ourselves, so that's five total, and then we Actually, had there was four people four people on our team at that time. We did they had the third person? We had me, you, and then uh we'll call him George and Roger. And Roger's <laughs> the guy that we let go. I know. But we had a we actually had another person at one point who quit on us eventually. You don't remember that guy because he yeah, was short lived. He, he was he wasn't there. He for wasn't there. Colors, okay, right? so he wasn't there. Okay, so there were four we, of us: me, Justin, Roger and our crew, Steve, and then us two, and then us two. Okay, and then we had the uh, two leaders from another paranormal group uh, that's pretty much on their own, but they had all the access to the equipment that I was we gonna used. Say, they had the high techy stuff that we did not. They were our tech guys. Yeah. Um, but they were our, our friends. We weren't using them for their tech stuff. Right. People, come on. Don't come on. <laughs> if you're going to do that, don't tell them that you're doing that, okay? And don't let other people know that you're doing that. Be like us and deny it and just say they're your friends. I mean, no. They're really your friends. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They were our friends. They were our <laughs> friends. And they had actually helped us get yeah. into a couple of investi- investigations. But yeah. Yes. So, you know, they had heard that we were going on this investigation. They wanted to tag along and said, hey, we'll bring all the equipment. And, of course, you're like, yeah, absolutely. But we had way too many people. And, unfortunately, uh, I think it was Roger you said was the one that we let go. Well, you know, we should let him go before this investigation because <laughs> his ignorance and his ridiculous nonsense was just overwhelming. Uh, not only was he, like, in his 50s, but he was flirting with girls that were 19 at the time and it's just like dude he wasn't dude, in his 50s he's in his 50s man stop it <laughs> maybe he's to in his 50s. us at that time he was in his 50s and he was maybe up. 40 <laughs> you know is that he's 48 so he's close to his 50s uh i don't want to i don't want to be getting emails or texts from certain people out there listening about <laughs> what i think an older person looks like or what i consider an older person by saying 50s okay I know certain people out there are going to ask me that question or want to ask me that question. Don't ask me. I'm not answering it. Um, (laughs) Anyway, the point is this gentleman was much older than these girls, and he was just extremely obnoxious, playing a piano in the middle of the investigation, in the middle of uh, the interviews as well, uh, being super loud. We've told him to stop numerous times. He wouldn't stop. It was just really frustrating. On top of this, we had well, because it was the basement and there wasn't a lot in the basement, everything echoed from one end of the basement to the other end. And so because of that, we have a group doing an investigation down in one room and another group on the opposite end doing an investigation in the other room, but we'd hear each other talking. Even if we weren't talking loudly, we'd still hear each other. And so often you'd have a lot of... Uh, uh, voices coming in on the EVP that kind of drown out any possible true EVPs that we could have gotten but couldn't hear because there was some kind of other uh, white noise or just voices coming in. Um, But I think the majority uh, of this investigation for us, even though it was fun, and there were a number of different things that people saw. In fact, one, and this is kind of a funny story, we got a call on the radio, Justin and I, and we were told that they saw a black figure, like a like a silhouette at the end of the hall by the stairs. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember that call or not. Yeah, I do remember. Um, and do you remember how we, we debunked it eventually? But do you remember who it, what it was? It was somebody that had walked in front of or it, into that hallway or whatever, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, but it, but it wasn't part. Of, they weren't part of our team. So what happened was one of our team members who were there that night saw this figure show up on a monitor and then disappear. And of course, with the monitors that we were using, which were all infrared, you're not seeing much. There's no real detail. You're just seeing, you know, the glow of a figure and then it disappears. Well, we someone went out to try to debunk it. And sure enough, they were able to because it ended up being a janitor who came walking down the stairs to clean. And the janitor said, oh, yeah, I was on my way down to clean. And then I saw people with flashlights in the dark and I got scared and ran back upstairs. (laughs) So... You know, that was something that was the bunch. It would have been cool if it was a, uh, you know, a silhouette of something else. But still, funny story. Um, but Justin, lead us into into this this back room that you began to talk about earlier and decided to wait until later to talk about. Yeah, I, I believe – I know it was – you did it by yourself, which is where we have the EVPs from. And then you and I were back there in this room as well. And uh, I don't remember if anybody else went back there, but in the se- like I said, it had to have been a freezer or, or something because it, it had the huge door. It had everything. Uh, it still had, I believe, uh, circle hooks still on the walls. It had a drain in the center, and then there was like. I think they had told us when they had first opened it, all that was in the center of this freezer was a chair. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's why first thought to me was, oh, my gosh, this was a torture chamber for the mob (laughs) because they had told us that the place had been owned by the mob. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there was a couple of times that... uh, Eric had went in there. I think I had went in there by myself for for a little bit, and then him and I went in there together. Very eerie feeling in, in this place, uh, in this office, and just knowing or su- having suspicion of what went on there was enough to f- to freak you out. Not to mm-hmm. mention any type of noises that were going on. Right, absolutely, and so. You know, when, when we, they happened to turn this this place into an office, all right, this room into an office, there there is now a desk in there, uh, and a chair, and a uh, something else. I'll let Justin talk about that a little later. But there's something else in there, um, and everything was pretty much concrete. You know, the, the walls are concrete where these studs were, uh, where you would normally hook chains up. Same thing in the in the floor. Uh, and the one thing that came up with the mob thing about them finding just a chair in there was the rumor that at one point it was also a, a cement factory at one point during its life and that the mob would actually kill people and then put them in the cement and they showed us a tub where they would do this and then haul these people out of there, um, which is cr- creepy in and of itself. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I think before we actually get into all of that, let's go ahead and take our second break so that way we can just – have some fun and share some stuff here. Uh, but folks, you're listening to Parachute Radio on the Parachute Radio Network. We are talking about the current series, Ghosts Among Us at Rockefeller Point and Ghost Alley. We will be right back after Justin's Paranormal Headlines. And now, and now Parachute, Parachute Radio's Parachute Paranormal Radio. Headlines. 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 How's it going, Parafans? Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines. And these headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. Mars methane spike, not a seasonal event. Mysterious spike of methane picked up by the Curiosity rover two years ago has yet to reoccur. Methane in the atmosphere of Mars could indicate the presence of microbial life on the red planet a fact that was not forgotten when a huge spike of the gas was picked up over the course of several weeks back in late 2013 and early 2014 by NASA's Curiosity rover. The spike saw methane levels rise from around 0.7 parts per billion to 7 parts per billion, prompting speculation that some sort of biological process could be at work. 
Now, though, over two years later, Curiosity has failed to pick up any other similar surges of methane, meaning that the mysterious spike doesn't appear to be a seasonal event. It was an episodic release, still unexplained, NASA wrote. However, the rover's measurements do suggest that much subtler changes in the background methane concentration, amounts much less during the spike, may follow a seasonal pattern. Ancient Nilometer discovered in Egypt. Archaeologists have unearthed a rare structure used by the ancient Egyptians to predict their harvests. Found within the ruins of the ancient city of Thumwi, the structure which dates back to the 3rd century BC, worked by calculating the water level of the River Nile during its annual flooding. The people depended heavily on this event, as it brought with it deposits of fertile silt that was invaluable for growing crops. But if the water level rose too little or too much during the floods, something that happened every five years or so, the results could be devastating. The nilometer, which resembles a small well with stairs leading down into it, helped to determine what type of harvest could be expected for any given year by monitoring the water level. This same information would then also be used to calculate taxation. During the time of the pharaohs, the nilometer was used to compute the levy of taxes, and this was also likely the case during the Hellenistic period, said archaeologist Robert Littman. If the water level indicated there would be a strong harvest, taxes would be higher. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Parachute Radio on the Parachute Radio Network. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are talking about our investigations at Ghost Alley and Rockefeller Point, or as Justin said, it is now currently called... Heights Rockefeller Building. Okay. Or maybe, so, it, was, maybe it was Heights Rockefeller Building, and then they changed it to Rockefeller Point. I'm not sure, but... Anyways, it, there was a sign on the building that said Rockefeller Point, so we're going with Rockefeller Point. <laughs> so before the break, we were talking about this odd, creepy little room that had a huge freezer door on it that was scary looking. Um, and about Justin and I going in and out of there to do EVP sessions on our own and together and so on and so forth. Uh, Now, during this time, and a lot of this focus is on this room right now because this is where the creepiest area in the entire building at this point. Yeah, I don't think any of the rooms other than this one were nearly as uh, eerie as as this particular office. Yeah, it, it would, yeah, there weren't that were nearly as eerie nor as intriguing because there's something about locking yourself into this room. Was like, wait, there was a chair here that you guys found and chains was, hanging from I the wall, so on and yeah, so I forth. To say that there was chains yeah, hanging as well. There are chains hanging from the wall. All right, this is where we got to be. So throughout the night, we're doing investigations, but also during the night, we were taking pictures. And Justin was taking a bunch of pictures with his camera. I was taking some with my camera. Uh, but Justin was the main, you know, guy here taking the photos. And as he was taking photos, and we're, you know, we go through all the all of our evidence within the first uh, three or four days after an investigation. We give ourselves about a week to get through everything because there's just right. hours worth of documentation to go through. Um, but we're going through, and I actually happened to be going through this when I when I noticed something. And I think it was me, or it might have been you. I can't remember which one of us noticed it first. Um, yeah, I don't remember who noticed it or who brought it up to whom. Yeah. Regardless, one of us, we're going through it, and we saw something in one of the images. And it happened to be pointing towards this door. This particular picture was faced towards the door. We're on the outside of the room. The door was partially open. Right. And there was something inside the room. And it was really creepy. Justin, tell us about it. Oh. So, we... 
I don't remember at what point I had taken this picture, but uh, as Eric said, we were outside the room. The door was kind of partial. It was so big that it, it kind of just kept swaying partially closed. So I took the picture, and when we finally looked at it, it looked like, and I'm going to emphasize looked like, it really wasn't, but looked like a almost like a Grim Reaper, a hooded figure with a skull-like face, and... Uh, I don't remember if we saw any hands or anything. I think we just saw like the hood and the and the skull. So, mm-hmm. unfortunately, at that point, we weren't very seasoned investigators as far as <laughs> doing investigations where people actually were. It was we had kind of done like we said cemeteries and, and open areas where there was no red tape to to do things. So we actually brought this evidence to our clients saying you guys gotta see this it's really weird what do you guys see and they're like there's a skull face there and we're like yeah we can't explain it uh very weird but there it is Mm -hmm. so afterwards eric investigated further and calls me and tells me what (laughs) well (laughs) yeah (laughs) I decided I was a little bored and had to go through it again because it was a really cool picture. And so I'm on the computer, and I happened to blow it up this time, which is probably something you should do the first time you go through pictures, <laughs> folks. Now, mind you, this is the very early career of our investigations, and we're learning. This is why you need to listen to us. So we can tell you, you know, you can learn <laughs> what not to do. If you want to do ghost investigations. If you want to do ghost investigations, listen to what we're telling you. Oh, no, the cat just had to show up. <laughs> um, anyway... So I blow up this picture, and I'm all excited. I'm like, i got to get a better look at this Grim Reaper figure. Wasn't a Grim Reaper figure at all. In fact, it wasn't even close. Uh, if anything, one can suggest that this Grim Reaper figure, I have holding quotation marks here if you see the YouTube channel, this, this Grim Reaper figure, some can argue, would actually or could actually give you life in a sense. In which it gives you oxygen. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I breathe oxygen. A ghost that breathes that well, technically it breathes carbon dioxide, but it releases oxygen. <laughs> um, so, if any of you got any of those hints, you already know what I'm what what this thing was. It turns out that this Grim Reaper had a rather leafy disguise. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys haven't caught on after all of these things right now, there's something shame seriously on you. wrong. If you haven't caught on by now, you're not you're in no place to investigate, <laughs> so don't. But it happened to be a tree, okay? A potted in this tree. office, a potted tree. This office, the people who had this office, happened to have a potted tree in the back of the room next to their next to their. Uh, uh, desk, okay? And it just so happened that when Justin took the picture through the opening of this door, the flash caught the silhouette of this potted tree. And the leaves were shaped as such that it looked like the Grim Reaper, or a Grim Reaper-like figure. Unfortunately, it was debunked, yeah. and it was just a tree. That's how I run. Um, I capture plants as ghosts. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I, that, that's not how it should have gone down, guys. As Eric said before, learn from our mistakes if you want to be paranormal investigators. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Always learn from our mistakes. Uh, we learn from our mistakes. Yeah. We're still learning from our mistakes. Uh, <laughs> but by far, something we thought was really cool that we thought we had significant evidence and caught, unfortunately, we were wrong. Debunked. It was a tree, not a ghost. So, this was the only picture that we had caught that night with any type of so-called visual evidence to support a spiritual being, and it happened not to be a spiritual being. However, recently, I was going through the EVPs again, and we caught something else. And this actually is significant evidence, real evidence, folks. This is a Class A EVP that I caught uh, I was in the room by myself asking questions 
uh, even provoking a little bit. You might be able to hear people outside the room. The door was closed, but you might be able to hear people outside the room talking. You can tell that they're distant. But if you listen closely, there's a whisper. And it doesn't really respond to anything I say. It just kind of makes its own little statement or remark. So we're going to go ahead and play that for you right now. Actually, and just give you a moment. What I'll do is that? I'll play the... We're going to play the second half just to show... Play the second the, half? To show the contrast of what you can debunk and what you can't. Um, okay. So I'm going to play the second half just so we can say, okay, that sounds like an EVP, but here's how you debunk that. Yeah. So go ahead and make sure you turn it up nice and loud, too, if you will. All right. Because um, that one's kind of tough. EVP out. All right, let's, let's let's go ahead and play that one more time, folks. I know it's very difficult to hear. There's a lot of white noise going on there. It's underneath the white noise. Uh, we enhance it the best we could, um, and unfortunately, it's just not sounding as well as it does in our headphones over the speakers here, over your speakers. If you listen very closely, it's right before I say EVP out. You'll hear two words. EVP out. All right. So for those of you who may have heard it or may not have heard it, you might have heard something but couldn't make it out. Uh, there's actually two words there. Only one word is actually very clear over the, the radio that you're hearing, and that's the word yeah. Uh, now, what we actually call it was something or someone saying, oh, yeah. And it was saying, oh, yeah. Um and again, it's tough to hear that particular EVP as you just heard it. It's, it's tough to make it out. But I think if we play it one more time, now that you know what it says, and it's literally, it says, oh, yeah, EVP out. You'll hear you, it's significant. EVP out. All right, so there you go. Uh, and if you're watching YouTube, you actually saw me put a finger up as soon as it said, oh, yeah, uh, to kind of indicate that's when it's happening. Uh, you for those of you who want to hear the people at the end as well that are outside the room, too. Mm hmm. Um, so this particular EVP was one that I thought was a significant, like solid EVP. Thought it would, definitely was a disembodied voice coming in uh, to the recorder. Unfortunately, Going back and listening to it on the computer as opposed to through the uh, recorder itself, I was able to clear it up just by simply turning up my own headphones and the computer, you know, its output is much stronger. And you'll notice that when you're going, when we were going over the CVP, that the oh yeah sounds kind of distant, okay? And it almost sounds as distant as the people talking out and outside the door. Now, what's interesting, and of course, we, we, Justin didn't play it all the way through uh, to, to the very, very end there. But you'll notice that a guy outside there, after I say EVP out, a man's voice raises up and says, yeah, yeah. yeah as if like, you know, making a definitive like, oh, yes, I agree. Or, you know, yeah, yeah, that was cool. And I think what was happening is as one of the women, you could hear a woman's voice in the background there, as she was talking, somebody was agreeing with her under his breath, saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like that. And then later said, yeah, yeah, spoke up a little more. Um, and I think it's very clear that that's exactly what happened. Uh, the voice came from the same direction. Uh, it sounded like he was beyond the wall and beyond the door and not in the room with me. Uh, and it's unfortunate because it would have been a cool EVP to have, just, you know, someone saying, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, in regards to debunking it, if you, I don't know if you want to add something like as to what you're looking for. Or... Um, well, just debunking it in general, it, you have to play this whole clip to really understand how we're going to debunk this. Because uh, there's an EVP before this that is clearly closer to the microphone 
of Eric's recorder compared to this oh yeah that, that you hear mm-hmm. later on before Eric says EVP out. Yeah. So it's that's how you we can debunk this is by playing the whole EVP before we say okay this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to debunking, again, you want to make sure you have the context of everything. Listen to the entire EVP from beginning to end. This EVP in particular was uh, almost seven minutes long. Um, and you have to listen to the full seven minutes in order to really grasp what's going on uh, and hear the different voices. But as Justin said, there is another EVP. This one is a this one is a solid EVP. This was legit. Uh, it's not just somebody talking outside the room. This is one that we actually caught inside the room. It was on my voice recorder. Uh, it wasn't necessarily responding to anything I said or asked, but it does say something. And at the beginning of this show here, actually it was via text message or, or email, uh, I asked Justin to listen to it because he hadn't heard it yet and to tell me during the show, after we play it, what he thinks it's saying. And then I'm going to tell him what I think it's saying. And we're going to see... Just for the fun of it, to see if we're hearing the same thing or something different. Same thing for you guys. Whatever you're, we're gonna play it. Let's play it like maybe three or four times. You know, just to really let every let it sink in, let people think. See if you can make out what this EVP is saying, what this this voice, the spirited voice is saying, and tell us. Okay. Now, obviously, you're gonna hear our personal views on what it's saying, but go against us. You know, if you disagree, you think it's saying something else, let us know. It's important. That's how we really come to a definitive answer. But uh, without further ado, I think, Justin, let's go ahead and play that clip. Again, folks, listen carefully. It's This one's going to be much louder than the last one. It should be pretty clear to you. But Let me pee out. Okay, so there you heard the whole clip, folks, uh, from beginning to the end. Obviously, you heard, okay, EVP out. But within the first few seconds, it's actually within the first three seconds, you hear another EVP. And we're going to go ahead and play it just a few more times just to let everyone, let it sink in. Um, And this time, let's just, after we hear that first EVP, let's just cut, cut it. And then restart it, right. and just so we can just focus on that first three seconds or so, or six seconds. All right, folks. So go if you haven't yet, though. I'm sure most of you have. Go ahead and turn the volume up on your keyboards. Uh, make sure your speakers are you know pretty loud here, so you can hear it. Uh, again, you can't miss it. It, it, it. Even if it's quiet, you should be able to hear it. But just in case, you want to be able to hear and read what it's saying. And again, send us your thoughts. But Justin, go ahead and play it a few more times for us. So then you got it three times. I know for a fact that anyone who's listening heard something from that EVP just now, that recording. That recording was into the EVP recorder itself, the digital recorder itself. Um, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm stalling a little bit because I want everyone to make up their mind of what you think it was saying before Justin gets his opinion and I get mine and we talk about it. So I'm going to give everyone 10 seconds here. Give you some quiet so you can think. Let's, go, let's play it one more time for them while we're waiting. All right. All right. Time's up, folks. If you have an idea of what it's saying, forget about what we're about to say and send us an email or a message via Facebook or whatever. However you want to contact us, just tell us what you think that voice is saying. Now, without further ado, Justin, I've been waiting for the last hour and nearly and a half <laughs> and longer to find out what you think this embodied voice is saying. Uh, well, and before I do 
folks, if you're watching on YouTube, put it in the comments even so other people can see what you think it says. Mm-hmm. What it sounds like to me, it, one of two things. It sounds like, what the hell is it? Or what the hell is he? Okay. Interesting. Did you come up with something completely different? Yes. Very <laughs> different, actually. All right. So, so you have, what the hell is it? Or what the hell is he? Okay. Those are the first two. Mine is, I've got a whiskey. It, it, then you laugh, but think about it. Let's no, go no, ahead and play it back again. Yeah, um, I'm okay. going to think of what you said. You think of what I said, and we'll see. Right. Okay. So just to reiterate, what I think it says is, what the hell is it, or what the hell is he? And I'll put that in the subtitles when this clip plays. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what the hell, right. what the hell, or, or it could even sound like what the hell was it, but I think it says what the hell is it, or what the hell is he? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think go ahead. it's, I've got a whiskey. All right, so once again, it'll be in the, in the subtitles for you guys. So now, Justin, now that we played through that and you know what I've said and I know what you said, does that at all alter your original thoughts on the CBP or is it still you're still very strongly opinionated on what you heard? I I can kind of hear it as you're hearing it. OK, uh, but I still think I'm still hearing what the hell is he? OK, interesting. It's very interesting because I'm still very much on this page of I've got a whiskey <laughs> and I'm not hearing what whatever Justin think, thinks it is. I'm not hearing that at all. Um, but <clears throat> you know, that that's kind of up to the, for debate, you know, we're going to put it out or there that you guys saying, decide. I'm a big sissy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Um, but you know, this is something, this is, this is something that obviously Justin and I can't, solidly say one way or the other, you know, because obviously we have two different opinions here and this is something that's not going to be determined by us. So we need your input out there. If you have something new that you think it's saying, or if you agree with either Justin and I, Justin or I, let us know in the comment box, let us know on Facebook, let us know via email, however you want to reach out to us, let us know. Um, But just for the record, and I don't mean to do this to persuade anyone in one way or the other. (laughs) Right, right. But I think I've got a whiskey and the fact it's different if you listen to it on headphones like I did when I threw my EVP, you know, on my computer, the original copy. Um, And I don't know if anyone else has the ability to do that, but it sounds almost as if he's slurring the whiskey part. So just the way he says it uh, between the wish, the wish. He's like, I've I've got a whiskey. I've got a whiskey. Well, not quite like that, but close. <laughs> but it's like he, the way he says whiskey isn't like I'm saying it. Whiskey. He says whiskey like that, like whiskey. There's an emphasis on the whish. But that could also be it, that it can't come up with the the right. Could be. Could be. Now, what I said, though, isn't actually what I was going to say to pers- possibly persuade someone one <laughs> or the other. That was just that was just a thought I wanted to mention. What's, what I find interesting about it is our entire discussion on the mafia or the mob being there. Mm-hmm. And we know that people in general drink, but the mob definitely seems to have a, an interest in drinking their, you know, high end whiskeys and, you know, all that. Um, Just and at least that's something. Alcohol in general. Uh, I had anything. Yeah. Um, so take that into consideration if you want to. I, I don't suggest it, but. Just listen to the EVP. Let us know what you think in the comic bo- comment box, Facebook, you know, whatever, email. Um, we're getting we're, well. We're beyond the end of the show, as you all know. So, uh, you know, right now, I'd like to just take a moment for both Justin and I to just send our apologies to all of you for keeping around for so long for this episode. 
Um, it is time for us to go. I don't know if you have any more comments or anything really you want to mention. Quick. Yeah. Just to really quick touch on how you can debunk okay. the oh yeah and then the little giggles after EVP out. When you hear the what the hell is he or I've got a whiskey, whatever whatever this this person or creature is saying, uh the oh yeah is you can tell that it's much more distant than than this what the hell is here I've got a whiskey because it almost sounds like this person is in the room with Eric where the oh yeah is further away and then you hear the oh yeah yeah EVP out giggles and like Eric said I cut it off a little early but the guy also gets a little bit louder which I'm thinking this was Roger by the way uh, could have been <laughs> so uh, but that's how you can distinguish where debunking the the entire thing that first EVP is much more distinct and almost in the room with Eric where the oh yeah almost sounds like it's much further away or outside mm-hmm. of the room even. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not to say you can't get EVPs that are naturally sound further away. Uh, some spirits don't manifest themselves as much, and therefore their voice is a little quieter. Also, if it's yelling from down the other side of the room, question it. You know, Obviously, if you're getting a voice and you're the only one in the entire building, then there's something there. <laughs> right. But if there's other people in the building, figure it out. You know, Find out where everyone is. Try to determine if... You know, anyone who's in the general area where this voice would have come from, so on and so forth. Just really, you know, map out your location and try to, you know, scratch things off the list, basically. Right. Until you have nothing left or you have something. Uh, so, yeah, Justin did it very, you know, he put it plain, straight, forward. In other words, good job. Debunk, debunk, Good debunk. job. <laughs> debunk, debunk, debunk. Um, yeah. But uh, I believe next week we have another episode, right? Are you? Of telepathic uh, well i was about to i was no i was <laughs> see ya uh but um next that's what i was going to be do. the next next installment in the series of ghost among us so okay. I, I believe we're actually pretty open so the ghost among us series will continue until the very okay, end good. there will be no interruptions uh we are actually coming up on our two-year anniversary, believe it or not. Yeah! Of Paratruth Radio, the show, not Paratruth Radio Network. That'll be a year right. next year. Uh, Which means, if you have any anniversary guests or anniversary <laughs> money, please send it to... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not giving my address out, people. No, that's not happening. I don't... No, no offense. I just don't trust any of you. Well... I'm... A, Beautiful creature. I don't need stalkers. <laughs> we are coming up with the Patreon account. So, folks, uh, if you feel the, the urge to donate to Paratrooth Radio to keep us up and running, uh, I do mm-hmm. encourage you guys to do that. We will put a link of, for the Patreon account up on Paratrooth Radio Network, or I'm sorry, ParatruthRadio.com and ParatruthRadioNetwork.com or PTRNetwork.com. And uh, all I have to say towards the end here is if you watch us on YouTube, subscribe. If you listen to us on Spreaker, follow. You guys will get automatic updates as to when a new episode is up and active. So (laughs) definitely check that out. If you want to follow us on Facebook, join the Facebook group, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, We would appreciate that as well. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, So comment, like, share, subscribe, and email. So until next week, folks, where you will find us same time, same channel. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. Peace. Don't press stop yet. Okay. If you enjoyed this episode of Parachute Radio and you would like to listen to it again or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can listen to them on HD at our website, parachutheradio.com. 
And you can also find us at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for brand new updates of our show every day. 